with you, here with you today. I am Masara Muhammad, and I'm going to introduce my group member, Mahmoud Atabak Sarit, Ur Urlu, Barkin Mitten. We're going to represent our robot, industrial logistics robot, which is Bunnet. It has been supervised by our great doctor, Mahmoud Ayaldis, and also we have an internal jury from Turkey, Ahmed Denker. Uh, 7,590 miles away from Lima, there is a city called Istanbul in Turkey. It is considered as the economical uh, capital of this city. In this city, there is a university called Istanbul Bilg University, which is where we're from. It is also one of the laureate members. We're going to continue this presentation to introduce ourselves, where we're from, and our university. Uh, as I mentioned before, I am Masara Muhammad, a senior student in Istanbul Bidi University from Electric and Electronic Department. My main uh, research interest is machine learning and automation and control. We're going to continue with our group member, Mahmoud Azabar. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Mahmoud Azabar Sarı. I'm a senior student in Bidi University. Uh, our department is Electrical and Electronics Engineering. Uh, my interests are uh, artificial intelligence, machine automation, communication, and defense in industry also, and uh, embedded systems. We will continue with Uğur. Hi everyone, I am Uğur uh, I am a senior student at Istanbul Bilgi University. Uh, uh, my uh, department is electric and electronic. Uh, and also my ex expertise is uh, modeling and uh, animation. Uh, let me uh, introduce our coach, uh, Mehmet Ayildiz. He is faculty member of the Department of Mechatronic uh, Engineering at Istanbul Big University and uh, <coughs> research interest in both mechanics, biomechanics, and habits. So, Barkan will continue. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Barkan Metin. Uh, I'm also a senior uh, year student at Istanbul Big University at Electric and Electronic Engineering. Uh, my main interests are uh, local systems, uh, microcontroller programming, and networking. Uh, now we're going to continue with my friend Mehmet Atavar Hello everyone, I'm from Istanbul. Uh, Istanbul is a unique city which has been uh, the uh, uh, capital of the two powerful uh, empires, uh, which is uh, East Roman Empire and Ottoman Empire. It's also called uh, Constantinopolis in uh, East Roman Empire. So uh, also today uh, it continues its glamour as one of the centers of commerce and <coughs> culture in the world. Now we want to show a small video that represents our uh, city. University is uh, located at the uh, uh, previously power plant and uh, being one of the largest uh, campuses in Istanbul, which can be seen on the maps easily. Uh, it enters about uh, 30,000 uh, students and one of the well-known uh, faculties is uh, Engineering and Natural Science uh, faculty. Uh, 
we are student, yeah, we are, like we said, we are all are uh, from the electrical and electronics engineering uh, faculty. Uh, now we are going to show you our campus. This is Bilki. The place where you will be a part of life in the city. Let's take a closer look. Here, you'll find the most ambitious academic departments in numerous fields. Leading academics and professionals are here for you throughout your time at Bilgi. You will learn by experimenting and being actively engaged. You will benefit from superior opportunities regardless of your field of study. full access to one of Turkey's best university libraries. You'll see that your education in state-of-the-art classrooms, laboratories, and studios doesn't just prepare you for exams, it prepares you for life. that studying abroad is much easier at Bilgi. Almost as easy as flying away. You will also find many things to follow your interests outside your academic department. Or they will find you. From science fiction to think tank clubs, gastronomy to sailing, as long as you want to set sail for new horizons. Even though the power plant at the campus is a museum now, Bilgi continues to generate power in every field. World-renowned events, and guess will be a regular occurrence in your life at Bilgi. A life you will live fully by learning, discovering and sharing awaits you here. For this is not just a university. This is Bilgi. Master Mohamed is going to uh, continue with the technical presentation. which means a small basket or a container. Uh, the bullet can intelligently detect, <coughs> carry, pick up, load, and unload the objects while avoiding the obstacles. Uh, the storage of bullet can be maximized by ex extending these loads, which uh, we're going to be able to hold more than six objects at a time and able to unload them. A uh, bullet can place objects vertically or, hard or horizontally in the specific regions and we're going to also uh, continue to give 
more details about the robot during this presentation and all the mechanical design and the subcomponents, capability of the network and algorithm, and also the software and communication. We're going to continue with the mechanical design with my friend Or Orlo. I will give it. I will give some information about our robot planet design. Uh, so you can see at that part that uh, our robot uh, planet uh, uh, lives different angles. Uh, so we uh, select mechanical wheels because we wanted to get uh, advantages for moving easily. So we used uh, six motor drivers for uh, four of them is uh, for mechanical wheels, one of them is for uh, extendable slots, and one of them is for telescopic camera. And also, we uh, used six servo motors for the manipulator and one linear motor at the gripper. Uh, and the uh, uh, most important thing, in my opinion, is uh, extendable slots because we want to carry lots of boxes. So it provides the two more uh, uh, carry to access. So uh, we designed like that. And uh, also uh, we use the telescopic camera because our, robotic, uh, our robots have some limits. So we don't uh, want to uh, arrange it. So we designed like that. And also Masari will continue. of directions with the minimum control effort, uh, bullets can easily move around the arena without any problems and left or right, front or back, or even around the arena easily. Also, ability to operate in different moves. At the moment, bullet is able to operate in teleoperated mood and also in a semi-autonomous mood. For the fully autonomous mood, that is left for a near future plan. Remote monitoring the workspace, we are using various of cameras like Raspberry Pi camera module, Pixie camera, FPV camera. Uh, for the Raspberry uh, Pi camera module, we use this camera to give a focused view of Bunet. And the FPV camera, we are giving the full view of the surrounding for Bunet for it to be easier for the operator to pick up objects and load them and unload them in the distinguished area. Also, uh, we are using a discover camera. The FPV camera is a place in a, uh, in a rod in the back of the robot that it's got, it can be zoomed up to give the focused view of the uh, of the loading part and also we're going to view the full view of the arena. Uh, object identification, we're using uh, six proximity sensors at the edges of the bonnet. Uh, in the teleoperated mm -hmm. mode, we have also two modes. We can activate the uh, proximity sensors so we can uh, avoid any obstacles. Uh, if the sensor sends any obstacle, it stops the robot and then we can switch to the a proximity sensor off and we can move the robot. Uh, we're going to continue more with my friend Park and Mati. Okay, uh, my friend mentioned about the uh, obstacle avoidance, but I'm going to mention a little bit more. Uh, there are two modes uh, in the teleoperatively, uh, so one of them with the uh, infrared uh, mode, uh, infrared on mode, and infrared off mode, like my friend said. Uh, in infrared uh, on mode, uh, when uh, our robot detects an obstacle, it stops uh, uh, directly. Then we have to switch to the uh, infrared off mode, so we can avoid the uh, obstacles and uh, other, th other things in our way. Uh, now I'm going to continue with the uh, wireless communication. Uh, we are using uh, 2.4 gigahertz for controlling the uh, movement part of the uh, panels uh, and. 5.4 GHz uh, for 
uh, live streaming from the telescopic camera, uh, and there uh, there is a 2.4 uh, gigahertz modem for streaming from the uh, Raspberry Pi. Uh, then uh, the main uh, special tool of our robot is vertical and horizontal loading and unloading. Uh, Funnet uh, has equipped with a manipulator that can uh, uh, that with a uh, six uh, dot three link manipulator with a gripper uh, and it can uh, load and uh, unload objects uh, between 12 centimeter size to the 17 centimeter size uh, and it can uh, put uh, every uh, object with every uh, like uh, every size that I mentioned in the range uh, on its back uh, and it can also uh, is like my friend said it's the uh, one of the most important things of our robot uh, because of the limits in the competition uh, we have to fit in the 50 centimeters to 50 centimeters range so uh, it's was a little bit uh, harder to fit with three kind of boxes so we create an expandable storage type uh, which uh, works with the two linear motors uh, when we press the button it uh, just opens the uh, two slots from sides and uh, there's a uh, it creates a, a slot in the middle of the two slots uh, I want to talk with the uh, special design of the gripper because uh, like I mentioned the, uh, it can uh, hold up to 12 centimeter uh, objects up to 17 centimeter objects uh, and there's a rubber uh, used uh, inside of the gripper so uh, it can hold any object easily and uh, perfectly uh, now I'm uh, my friend Atabark is going to continue Now I'm continuing with the working algorithm. Uh, this is the main part of the, uh, our robot. Uh, Funnet uh, starts with the waiting uh, connect, uh, connection of the components. These components are uh, that my friends mentioned about that. Uh, 2.4 gigahertz radio controller, Bluetooth application, uh, 5.8 gigahertz uh, camera transmitter and screen, uh, web server. Uh, these are the waiting connect, uh, connection uh, components. Uh, at that state, no movement and no displacement in our robot. Then, uh, when is the con connection is completed, uh, mode uh, we, uh, robot wants to uh, mode selection. In that, uh, after the mode selection, uh, you can select teleoperated or semi-autonomous mode. For the teleoperated mode, uh, first, we uh, we will start with the navigation mode. Uh, it's directly act uh, upon the uh, user's uh, command and uh, check the ob obstacles uh, when the IR sensor is on. Uh, check the obstacles uh, and grant limits uh, to workspace. Uh, then uh, also it checks the moving objects, uh, people or something else, uh, and. In that time, also broad broadcasting camera input and uh, sensor data. Uh, then, when we saw an object that we need to uh, put, uh, grab it, uh, the group manipulator starts with the uh, manipulator oncoming mode. Then, we are continuing with the wrapping mode. Then, uh, we will carry on the storage space. Then, uh, when we need to put them uh, off together, uh, Again, uh, the designated area, uh, we, will, we will continue with the unloading mode. On the uh, grabbing mode, if we need to uh, turn uh, kind of the object, uh, the also in that mode, uh, extendable storage space will uh, coming out and we have uh, extra space. For the semi-autonomous mode, uh, it's directly uh, navigation by our uh, sensors and cameras. Uh, it identify the objects and, uh, by the camera and come closer with it. 
<coughs> it's uh, directly follow the uh, track and follow the uh, shortest path. Then uh, also in the same time, it's checking the uh, obstacles and uh, ground limits. Then uh, after that mode, uh, we will continue with the manipulator oncoming and onloading mode, uh, like we, uh, like I explained in the teleoperation mode. So we will continue with communication diagram and software and control. Uh, uh, for the software part, such an intelligent robot, there are lots of uh, things to, uh, lots of signals to process. So we use uh, lots of uh, uh, microcontrollers to process the, those data. Let's start with the Raspberry Pi. Uh, we use Raspberry Pi for uh, detecting the uh, o uh, objects with a uh, object uh, detection uh, and uh, sending it to the directly to the uh, computer uh, by its color and uh, after it's detected the uh, object by its color and size it's going to uh, get the object and uh, put it on the declared area uh, the Arduino mega boards are uh, responsible with the uh, main uh, control parts uh, like movement parts and the uh, manipulator arm uh, so one of the Arduinos are just uh, working with the uh, moment parts and control the mechanical wheels, and the other uh, two uh, Arduino Megas are uh, connected to each other and getting signal from the each other. One of them is uh, controlling the uh, arm uh, perfectly, and the other one is uh, for the uh, external storage. Uh, now, if you have uh, questions. Okay. Hey, thank you. Now we're going to have five or ten minutes of questions and answers. It depends on the external community. Thank you, guys. Do you have something else? Okay, so, I'm oh, sorry. We're going to show the video, and then we go and have the questions and answers. Thank you. I'm sorry. wanted to let you guys know their names again. We have Mr. J from Ford, Brazil. We have Victor from Lima Bionics. And we also have Ruben from Kuka, Kuka, Kuka Robotics. So do you guys have any questions for the team? Yes. Thank you. Um, first of all, uh, you have had a nice presentation. My question is for the semi-autonomous mode. You're saying that you identify the objects with the camera and reach them by following the shortest path. This includes uh, that you can identify objects and obstacles, right? Then how do you construct the shortest path? Uh, yes. Uh, in semi-autonomous mode, you're asking that uh, the shortest path how uh, is declared. Uh, first, uh, the locomotion part that uh, included the pixie camera that uh, detects the object by the camera, uh, it, it has an uh, integrated circuit that uh, FPGA uh, to process the uh, object, uh, yeah, see the object and give some uh, information to our, uh, Arduino. Uh, then uh, by the, it detects color and some sizes then uh, if 
we uh, filter it that uh, this is our uh, want to uh, grab object or this is the object uh, we want or not, uh, then we are uh, saying, yeah, our algorithm says that uh, we need to go near it. If it's not uh, see any object, it's check out the right side and left side. Uh, it's, if it see something else, uh, go near uh, by it. Uh, but uh, first, uh, uh, your question that how it's uh, <coughs> come near and shortest path, uh, it's uh, understanding the size, which one is uh, is bigger, uh, it comes uh, first. The object is first to come in. I see. So can, you don't have guarantees in the path itself, but you choose the object which is closer to you. Uh, because if you want to have guarantees about the shortest path, mm -hmm. you might need an algorithm like Digistra, A star, or something like that. So yeah. you can have guarantees that the execution of the path you have, uh, it's the shortest on all the possible solutions for that. But I think what you're doing is you are uh, identifying several objects, mm -hmm. and then you are choosing the one which is closer. Yes. OK. So. Uh, it's not exactly the shortest path, but it's a smart uh, strategy. Mm -hmm. Just go pick the, the bigger one, yeah. big sum of yeah. yeah. Do we have any other questions? No? No? Uh, yes, Hello. Hello, team. So, uh, again, um, as Victor mentioned, good presentation. Thank you. And so yesterday in our uh, informal conversations, uh, you were still trying to install the camera, right? Were you successful with that? Uh, yes, we, we are successful on that. We connected it, we tested it. Uh, it's coming closer to uh, it's coming closer to the object uh, that we uh, explained again. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, team. Good morning. Thank you for the presentation. It's good. Have any problems with vibration in the mechanical design like for the mobile the machine? Uh, for for example, uh, moments, right? For example, in in different speeds uh, or in different uh, elements um, above the the platform, for example. Yes, we. Uh, solve some problems like that. That's why uh, in our modes, uh, like proximity on and proximity off, that uh, we see the objects. Uh, in that, uh, in the code, uh, when it, uh, the proximity sensors are off, uh, it uh, go faster than the on, on mode. Uh, because uh, when it's uh, going to um, some uh, oncoming to, uh, objects, uh, in the z-axis, uh, it's some uh, some movements. Uh, that's why uh, we don't want to see that uh, because the objects can move each side. But right? we have some uh, some uh, how can I explain? we have some small uh, pieces to don't uh, move outside of the uh, robot the objects. Uh, we solve that problem like that. But uh, like you asked that uh, in the proximity on mode. Uh, we are uh, going slower than the other modes for secure the objects. Uh, in the manipulator part, uh, when we are grab grabbing uh, and putting on the, our storage space, uh, we are stopping because also some uh, torque uh, in the bases is increasing. Like the mo moments is uh, affecting the bases. So, um, do you have? the answers about the problems, uh, possibilities, the solutions? Uh, yeah, we are, we are waiting to uh, the manipulator part to finish the, uh, its sequence. Uh, then our uh, robot uh, go to the uh, navigation mode. We are waiting the other moves. Like, uh, the section, one section is uh, finished, the other part is continued. That's uh, why uh, we are um, not doing the, uh, two things at the same time. 
Thank you. Thank you.